Hi, this is Ali Shabba here, and this is the OFM G Quad 8 octacopter for heavy lifting and a professional DSLR cameras with the uh, dual operator setup. Fully autonomous flight capable using the uh, wireless data link modules from DJI, Bluetooth, and iPad ground station system. Normally, uh, I prepared this version with uh, high efficiency 390 kV medium size motors. Um, 390 kV motors which are high torque and very very good motors to provide uh, enough lift to carry 6 to 8 kg in fact but uh, upon request from one of our customers in Australia now I have prepared this giant quad which is going to be the OFM's most powerful giant octa ever I believe or maybe until the next time we build another one. Uh, this one is built with the high torque, high efficiency, uh, bigger motors actually. Um, let me focus it up. Tiger Motors 330 kV. All right, normally what I do is I use these motors on giant quad version only because these motors are capable of lip, uh, spinning about uh, 17 inch propellers and provide enough lift on a giant quad to carry the DSLR cameras. But upon request of our customer, we have put the, these big badass motors on this giant Octa. Eight of them spinning 15 inch props each. Imagine what a lift this will generate. I wish I brought some weight to carry today to see what it can do. Maybe we can put Irish under it and he can, this can lift him. But uh, I'm sure this is easily be able to lift 10 kgs without any problems. We are using 60 amp ESCs instead of 40 amp and Gryphon power distribution board in the center. So let's uh, start with the pre-flight setup. Pre-flight setup should be very, very easy. It will come all uh, assembled this way, but fold it down like a squid. So all you need to do is unfold the landing skids. At the moment, we did not add the uh, retracting skids, but they are plug and play to add easily. So I'll be supplying that later. Um, in case of the retracts, you just uh, unfold the machine and power it up and retracts will simply go down. Once you unfold the machine and put one screw on each arm and on the landing gear and make it solid and nice, you have to install propellers and propellers are very, very easy to install. If you look from top, you have the cross. Okay, so cross will be spinning counterclockwise propellers and you have an X which will be spinning clockwise propellers. That is very, very easy. So once the propellers are installed nicely and tightened, uh, everything else is configured. All we need to do is move on to the compass calibration. And and if you want to install the gimbal, um, you have to add a little bit more equipment. I already have added these little silver towers there, so that equipment, or uh, that piece will be easier to install. And it will install two carbon fiber booms on which, uh, using a mesh of zip ties, this gimbal will sit. And this gimbal has its own stabilization system and its own radio system to control. So it's a totally independent system for the camera operator to get best shots. Now let's move on to the GPS compass calibration and after that we will give it a flight. After the flight we will test how the iPad GCS is working. All right, before the compass calibration so far the setup on your Futaba 14 SG radio is very very simple. Okay SC here your switch SC is intelligent orientation control SB here, your switch SB is return to home and land, so you can activate anytime when you want it to come back. So make sure during flight it's all the way away from you when you're holding up. And then you have a switch E, which is your flight mode. Down is manual, middle is G um, attitude hold, up at GPS control or GPS hold. And SC, uh, intelligent orientation control, off. Middle is course log or home log, and here is point of interest. You can study more about this later. Turn on the radio. I have put dual 3S9000 million. That means I'm going to give it a 6S9000 million in series. So now you have these kind of connectors. So one is going to your WKM and one is going to your power distribution, which will power the motors. Right now, I'm not using the power connector. I'm going to use the 3S battery to power the uh, WKM and do the compass calibration only. So here we go. Plug it on and your LED should be blinking three times in red means there is no satellite. Compass calibrating this giant is really trouble because it's too big and too heavy. 
So we have to wait until we get all the satellites. This means in manual mode, these three blinking LEDs will be completely off. Let's wait for it. During the time we are waiting, you also need to make sure that there's an antenna, uh, arrow on the GPS antenna. This arrow must be pointing forward in China or in your country according to your area magnetic declination value. Check it on Google. This arrow should be pointing accordingly left and right. If you do not do it, uh, you might have a bad GPS like toilet bowl movement, not solid hold or even crashes sometimes. So make sure to check your area magnetic declination, move the arrow accordingly, and once done, do the compass calibration and only then fly. All right, we have full satellites. We go ahead, move the switch E a couple of times up and down until your LED gets blue. Now, lift the machine and horizontally, 360 degree, don't look at my ass until the LED turns green. Now, put the head down and rotate 360 degree again until the LED turns white. All right. Well, it's done. Power off everything. Wait for a couple of seconds and then power on your motors and everything all together. Now it's always better to wait for all the satellites to be found, which we have already, I see. Attitude mode, GPS mode. All right, good to go. CSC command. To arm and disarm the motors, you need to put both a stick down and inward or outward to arm and disarm the motors. So, down here, propellers will spin. Down here or outward, propeller will stop. Let's do it. Hi. Right now, there is no payload on it, so there must, might be some wobbles and dropping on attitude hull. So let me show you how to take off in GPS position hold mode or attitude hold mode. In manual mode, it's totally manual and you need to be very professional pilot to control it. But in GPS position hold mode, when you put it up right here, all you need to do is start the motors and put the throttle to 50 or 51, 52 or 55 percent and that's it. Your machine will rise and then once it's at the right altitude, you can just put the throttle back to middle and it will hold its position. It's just that easy. Now let me check, fly it around, and uh, after that we will check the uh, ground station control software. Without payload, flying it is like driving a big, powerful truck which has no payload or no load or nothing at all on it. So it's fast, agile, and very, feels like it's really light. So this baby flying there is capable of carrying six to eight kgs easily. And even 10 kgs for a while. It is a zoom shot. check for vibrations.
try the RTH. Big wind coming from back. Take off in GPS position, hold mode. So far, from this position. Far enough. All right, so I'm gonna flip the switch B down now, making sure it's in GPS position hold mode and throttle is in the middle. Okay, flip it down and your machine is rising. So it will rise to 20 meters. You can also set the distance to 30 meters or 50 meters, I mean the altitude for the return to home to clear the trees. For instance, the towers here are possibly 40 meters high so you can actually, oh sorry, 30 meters mostly, so you can actually set a good altitude for your return to home. Now it came back, it will, it took off from here, and it will land here. Put the throttle to zero, put the switch B up, and move the mode switch wherever you want to be, you're ready for the next flight. Alright, the gimbal is very simple to operate, it has its own stabilization system. Turn on the radio, turn on the power. And once it's started, it's actually stabilizing very well. You have the roll control on your rudder stick. So you can roll the camera gimbal on your rudder using a rudder stick. Then you have control of your pan 360 degree. Right now I'm holding the battery and everything in one hand so I cannot do much. Okay. And it's also if the multi-rotor is rotating your yaw axis is also stabilized and on the elevator on the radio you have the control for the tilt I have done a lot of holes here so basically this plate here is getting all the vibrations and after that from down here there will be no vibration going down to gimbal so all you need to do is just mount it under using the zip ties or whatever methods you prefer you can also use the screws for DIY methods enjoy and we'll keep you posted